84 and 85 teams were just dominant and they were part of a dynasty. They were part of a dynasty that started in 1981 and ended pretty much in 1987. It's never been done before and it's never been done again that they've won five national championships in a row. That tradition is very, very important and to have pulled an Orford University of Washington put you in a very special club, to do it for a national championship is that just that much more elite. I'm just proud to have them as my as my sisters in that endeavor. By the time 84 and 85 had rolled around, there was a lot of competition on the women's side, and they still were able to win that national championship. Eleanor McIlvain, who was in that crew, I believe said that that was the best race of her life, and it had to be the best race of their life because the competition was so significant. Really important part of this story is that Washington rowing changed national rowing. So I was a freshman at the University of Wisconsin, and at this time, the women of Washington were already legendary. They were railing off national championships like they were going out of style. And all we were trying to do was figure out what could we possibly do to be able to compete with the University of Washington. Absolutely the team that was setting the standard nationwide as the model for how to go fast. They had women on those teams that to this day are some of the best rowers we've ever seen here. Bob Ernst took over the program in 1980 and 1981. He said, okay, women, this is what we do. And if you want to be champions, if you want to be champions, then this is what you're going to do. And the women bought into it, proving that women can do what men do. So 1985 was the first year that women raced 2,000 meters. 1,000 meters was essentially a sprint. But the reason women didn't race 2,000 meters initially was because they thought the distance was too far for them. Well, in 1984, Joan Benoit won the marathon for the United States, first time women were ever in the marathon. And I think everybody came around and realized in rowing that not only could women row 2,000 meters, but we could excel at 2,000 meters, just like our male counterparts. Washington rowing is like really the, the perfect microcosm or example of how successful Title IX has been. Because what Title IX did was it brought in the funding and the coaches and the facilities and made them equal. And it really informed who I was as an, as an athlete. These young women were just a hair behind me and had even more of the advantages of Title IX. But we still were working our way in, whether we were in male-dominated professions, whether we were in you know, sales where we were really competing. That set the tone for our lives, and rowing prepared us for that. We're path setters and pathfinders, and many would say hopefully trailblazers. Not only were they great in their prime, but they're still involved with this program to this day. So I get to see most of them once a year at our alumni brunch and at various races throughout the year. They loved Washington rowing then, and they love it just as much now. And as a coach here, I'm so grateful to have them as a part of the story. George Pocock, he talked about how rowing and academics and being part of the community, all of those things, when you get to that level where you're succeeding at all of them, first of all, it takes a tremendous amount of work, but second of all, it's a wonderful feeling. And he used a quote from Browning where he said how fit to use all of the heart and the soul and the senses just for the joy of it. And I think that's what these women in 84 and 85 were able to achieve.